All right, so we are continuing our discussion of surfaces. And in uh, this little segment, we're going to be talking about uh, where, and specifically, we're going to be talking about <clears throat> adhesive. and abrasive wear. And the first one we'll talk about is adhesive wear. And as you can imagine from the title, adhes adhesive wear has to do with adhesion um, between uh, different surfaces. Okay. And so uh, we'll discuss the mechanism of adhesive wear. And essentially, you know, since surfaces are never, never perfectly smooth, then They will wear at their asperities. And the asperity is if you zoom in on a surface and you see these uh, ridges and valleys, these are our asperities. Um, <clears throat> and so, as you can see, if the area is really small, like right here, you see you have small areas where you'll have small uh, contact with other surfaces, then uh, the, the wear will occur there first. So it'll occur at the asperities. And this is due to high pressures. And the pressure can get so high such that the stress in the material exceeds the uh, yield stress and um, um, yield strength, ultimate strength in the material. Um, and in fact, uh, the deformation and the moving and the high pressures will cause the wear to occur and due to the high pressures and high temperatures because as the material moves uh, relative to another surface and so you can imagine <clears throat> we have another surface here and these surfaces are you know contacting one another uh, we have these high localized pressures and that occur in the contact and those high pressures over really small areas cause material deformation and the material the energy high, lots of energy is transferred to a small volume of material and it heats up because of the internal friction and in fact these temperatures okay so uh, will get so high that they weld so the temperatures can get so high that the material <clears throat> will actually weld. Okay, and um, if you've uh, studied welding at all in manufacturing, you know that the materials if you're that you're trying to weld. Uh, together, uh, the more similar they are, the easier they are to weld, and we'll talk, we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, but uh, if we do have welding, so if welding occurs, okay, and you know, we're talking about frick, we're talking about wear, and so when we're talking about wear, there's a, a basic assumption, you know, that <clears throat> we have these, these, these surfaces are moving relative to one another. And this relative motion between surfaces 
uh, causes high loads of these disparities. These disparities heat up and um, deform, permanently deform, and they could get so hot that they weld. And if the welding occurs, then shearing of those welds must also occur must also occur um, if there is relative motion okay so this is this is the mechanism that describes adhesive wear and this localized welding or adhesion between surfaces can um, um, cause these metal surfaces to weld and then shear and then break off from one another and then you know we get surface wear between the two okay so this 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 is the mechanism of adhesive wear and it can be further exacerbated or by abrasion okay and abrasion is what we're going to talk about next but abrasion is where you have particles that are um, rubbing on the surfaces as well okay so adhesive wear can also lead to abrasive wear because it causes these particles to weld and shear off and get in the way um, <clears throat> so metals okay that weld easily together are more susceptible to adhesive wear and it makes sense right according to the mechanism that we've described here so sometimes you'll hear adhesive wear described as scoring Okay, and scoring is the mechanism when the metal transfers excuse me to the other contact surface. Okay. And you may have seen scoring, uh, for example, uh, on <clears throat> different metal surfaces or between uh, bearing races and stuff like that. So if you've been around machines much, you've seen this. So this is what uh, 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 scoring will look like. It'll just be the transfer of that material from one surface to another. Uh, we also have another uh, term that's associated with adhesive wear and that is seizure okay so uh, seizure is when the metal transfers sufficient to cause all relative motion to stop. 
stop. Okay. Okay, when this happens, we call this seizure, and you may have uh, heard of this when people say, uh, my engine seized up, okay, uh, and that's usually associated with uh, not enough oil in the engine, okay, I've actually had this happen to me once before. All right, so that is the that's adhesive wear. Um, some of the terms there's actually two more terms um, that we kind of scale the adhesive wear uh, uh, terminology with, and that is in galling. Okay, and galling is when we have uh, severe adhesive wear, and we also have scuffing. Okay. And this is mild adhesive wear. So once you uh, see it and understand the mechanism, it's pretty obvious to spot on uh, different things. Okay, and we can take a look at the um, compatibility of metals and their wear uh, properties. Okay, and this is uh, shown in your book, and basically is an image that looks at the compatibility of various metals. So if you want to know um, uh, how susceptible a metal is to adhesive wear, you can actually look up the metal combination. And the worst case here is if you have the same metal, um, and they're identical, which means they're more compatible as far from a material uh, miscibility perspective uh, that means they actually have increased wear rate so the more compatible in this case for this diagram a metal is with another metal it means the worse or more susceptible it will be to wear all right so let's talk about another form of wear and that form of wear is abrasive wear and as we alluded to before abrasive wear is caused by loose particles rubbing on a surface And we actually use this in a number of applications. So this mechanism is uh, used in polishing, uh, even with um, some like car surfaces or uh, polishing metals. We use abrasive particles or sandpaper. Uh, so you know we'll see examples of polish, polishing compounds. Okay, so often they'll have uh, small, hard, tiny particles in them, polishing compounds. Um, sandpaper, uh, etc. So you get the picture. Um, so if we want to uh, limit wear we can increase wear resistance by uh, making the surfaces harder. Um, so we can do heat treat, flame, or induction hardening. Carburizing, nitriding, electroplating, flame plating, etc. 
etc. Okay, so we can increase the wear resistance. All right, so let's talk about some best practices. Okay, so best practices for machine design. when it comes to adhesive and abrasive wear are the following. Use oil and lubricants between surfaces if possible. Makes sense. Use particle filters okay, in uh, oils or fluids if you're going to use them if possible and feasible to minimize the abrasive wear in a component. Uh, design for wear. Okay, so you can actually design to have like a, a certain component for wear first intentionally that's easy to uh, replace okay so um, for example break uh, discs right or on uh, the on disc breaks we design the discs themselves to wear uh, much faster than the rotors okay so that's just an example of designing for wear, or designing for things to be replaced. Um, and you can also, you know, think about bearings, you know. Bearings are designed for long life, but they're also often re designed, um, so they're usually designed so they can be replaced. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the last form of uh, wear that we're going to discuss generally, in general terms, is fretting. Okay. So, what is fretting? Uh, well, fretting is also called fretting corrosion okay fretting or fretting corrosion and it is a form of adhesive wear uh, due to very small relative motion between surfaces. Okay, when we say small, we're talking about like 0 0.01 to 0 0.25 microns. Okay, a sheet of paper is about 100 microns. Um, so this mechanism of wear is usually uh, both adhesive uh, and corrosive. Okay, so usually fretting wear is, is also associated with corrosion. Uh, and you might have seen it before. It, it's uh, often seen in things like, you know, or shows up in things like press fits. Okay, so you have like pretty high loads between uh, surfaces, and if you have um, some small, very small relative motion, then you can get this fretting uh, bolted joints, bolted 
joints, okay, not necessarily at the bolts, but maybe around the joints where you have uh, higher loads between surfaces that are in contact, uh, riveted joints. Leaf springs, okay, uh, metal sheet, metal sheets um, in transport. So basically, if you're, you know, sending uh, sheets that are all on top of each other and they're uh, transported, then you basically get all the road vibration or transportation vibrations that go between the surfaces and that essentially you know these are all applications where you have high loads and very small relative motion okay so uh, fretting is dangerous okay um, because fretting can cause cracks and significantly reduce fatigue life. Or accelerate fatigue failure. And part of the reason you get this um, fretting failure is because when you have, uh, for example, um, surfaces that are in contact and you have loads, compressive loads in this case, uh, the material is going to want to uh, squeeze out <clears throat> and move. Okay. And that little bit of relative motion that can occur uh, at these interfaces is, is uh, what causes problems. And so uh, there's tons of examples if you want to look at different um, uh, examples that uh, show up. Uh, you can find them. And there's quite a few examples out there, so I encourage you to uh, take a look at them. So in this video, we talked about adhesive wear and included in adhesive wear is scoring, seizure, galling, and scuffing. Uh, we talked about the relationship of the compatibility and wear of uh, different uh, materials. And then we talked about abrasive wear and finally fretting. So this is a pretty uh, large overview of the different wear mechanisms, and there's also some quantitative ways to take a look at wear rates and materials, which we'll discuss in another video.